Hello again, you fine people. We are back with another video. But first, I must bring you some bad news. You may remember in our last episode, we boldly launched this series in our noble claim to gain views. But then the comments trickled in. Problem is, man, a bunch of people already made these. Yes, Alvin Blocks is making a series. Gnome Code's work is going to be useless. And so it seems our arch enemy, Alvin Blocks, has discovered our plan to usurp him and has countered my attack by publishing his own piggy videos. And so, in the face of incredible odds, I gave in. Oh wait, no I didn't, because the good news is we've just hit 1,000 subscribers and we're just getting started. Our game is not a remake. This isn't Piggy, this isn't Granny. This is Teddy. And so, let's continue where we left off. Okay, so in the last video we got our Teddy walking around the map so the player could control them. But what if only one player was in the game? Well, ideally we could do with some kind of bot to control the monster so they can still play even if they're on their own. Nobody wants to be stuck around waiting in a lobby after all. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some kind of basic AI system for our monster here. So click on the model, I'm going to add in a new script and we're going to call this AI. And although this might seem like a bit complex, actually it's uh, not too bad once we break it down. So we start off, we're just going to try and move the character. So we're adding in a new part, make it green so we can see it. I'll move it over here. We'll uh, anchor this part and turn off can collide, okay? And we can even name it destination if we like. Okay, and then back into our AI script. Uh, we're going to create a few variables. So we can say local teddy will be equal to script dot parent and local humanoid will be equal to teddy dot humanoid okay and then if we want it to move all we need to do is call a function on the humanoid so humanoid and we can use the move to function and this takes a position so we could use a like a vector three value um, but we can actually use the position of that part we just added so we can say workspace dot destination dot position okay so now if we run the game we can see our guy will move towards the brick however he's not got those animations so let's go and give him some animations shall we so if we go in and play with that uh, character we got running in the last game of course he's got our animations so what we need to do is we need to go into the workspace find our character and copy the animate script this is added by default Remember, we changed some of the animations using our server script, but the local script's added by default. So we can copy that and then paste him into here. But this isn't actually going to work on its own because if you notice, it's a local script, so it's not going to run. So we need to make it a server script. So I'm going to add in a new script. I'll rename this one animate. And then if we open up that local script, I'm going to select everything, control X, cut and paste it into the server script. And then all we need to do is take all of these, which are the individual animation values. I'm gonna control X them as well and paste them into the new one. And then I can delete this local script. And so now if we run the game, it's gonna have the walking animations, cool. Uh, now we have just picked up some kind of error here. So let's see what that's about. Um, oh, this is to do with the emotes, so we can just delete that because the NPC isn't going to be doing any chatting. Uh, so hopefully that gets rid of that. Nice one. Okay, now this is a little bit boring, him just moving to one part. So how about we add in a second part? Okay, that one's called destination. We'll call this one destination two. And then back in our AI script, we can add in a loop now so we can say while true do and then we can move him to the first position and then we could add a wait uh, we could say wait three and we could try and time how long it takes for him to move but we can actually use uh, an event of the humanoid itself we can use the humanoid dot move to finished and then when this event is triggered we want it to use the wait function so it'll wait until they stop moving and then it will can go to the next line, which in this case, we're gonna copy and paste these two lines and we'll just change it to destination2.position. 
Now, generally you shouldn't use a while true loop unless you've got some kind of weight in. Of course, we have got our weight with these lines, so it's not gonna crash or anything. Go ahead and run that. Hopefully what you should see is you should move between these two points back and forth. So now I've got him moving, but what if I was to add in a part in between like this, make a big wall and put that right in the middle of him? Well, he's just gonna get stuck. It's clearly not intelligent enough to be able to walk around because he's just trying to find the most direct route. So if we want to do something other than that, we'll actually need to use something called pathfinding service, okay? So back into the AI, and we're gonna create another variable now. We'll say local path, we'll capitalize this for the hell of it, pathfinding service equals game get service pathfinding service. And then we can create a path, so local path equals pathfinding service create path and then what we need to do is we need to calculate path so we say path and we use the function compute a sync and this takes two values it takes a our current position and our destination position so we want to say teddy dot and we can use the humanoid root part as our current position and then the destination, well, we can copy the workspace.destination, can't we? And so if we comment this out and make sure we're taking the position of both of these objects. So now we've computed the path to the position, we just need to walk to that position. So what this does is it creates a table then of different waypoints, so we can loop through them using a for loop. So we can say for index waypoint in pairs path colon get waypoints do. And then for each item, what do you want to do? We want to walk towards that waypoint. So I can use the humanoid move to function again. And instead of saying the workspace dot destination dot position, we just want the waypoint dot position. And then I'm going to make sure he waits each time for every waypoint. So if we run that now, he's just going to walk towards the part and it might look like nothing's changed. But let's try wrapping this inside a loop again, shall we? So we'll put all of this inside a function, local function, uh, get path. And well, that will expect a destination parameter. And then we will return the path and that will be the first function. So this is just getting the path. Then we're going to create another function and this will be like a custom move to function. So we call this, we'll call this walk to, and this will take the destination parameter as well. And then inside here, well, first of all, we need to get a path. So the local path will be equal to uh, get path destination. Now you might be wondering why we split these into two functions. Uh, this will become apparent in a minute. Uh, then once we've got the path, we want to move to that point. So we'll move that for loop into the function as well. Make sure we're indenting it. Uh, that all looks good. And then inside our while true loop, instead of using humanoid move to, we can now use our custom walk to function. So we can say walk to workspace dot destination. And we also need to change the get path function here. So instead of saying workspace dot destination dot position, we can just say destination dot position because destination is now a variable. So we're going to pass in workspace dot destination, just the object. And then after that, just new line and destination two, and everything else should be taken care of by these two functions. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we should see our Teddy walking between these two points. Now it's going to look the same as before at first, but let's try and add in this part again. We'll create a nice big wall, anchor it so we can't push it over. And we're going to move that in between him now. 
And what he's going to do is he's going to try and walk around the wall. Now, if you notice, he gets stuck on it a little bit. And that's because our character is so big. He's a lot bigger than the uh, default characters you'll see. So we can actually pass in some parameters to this create path function. So we uh, create a new variable, local path params equal to, and this is actually a dictionary. So it takes a few values. The first one is agent height. And that needs to be equal to however high the character is. So we can measure this out by adding in a new part, scaling it up. And let's see, how tall is that? He's around, let's see, he's around 15 studs high. So we set that equal to 15, comma. And then the next value is agent radius. And let's see, how wide is our character? So obviously this is, uh, we can do it like this. And we can see he's about seven, oh, about eight. About eight across. So that would be his entire diameter. The radius is half of that. So we'll set that to four. And then finally, we need to set agent can jump. And default, this is set to true. But in this case, I don't want our monster to be able to jump. So we'll set this to false. And then we'll pass these path parameters into the create path function. So hopefully now when we run the game, he's going to try and walk around this again. And he's not going to get stuck this time. He's going to give himself enough leeway to get around the wall. And the great thing about the path finding is it's dynamic. So if we move the wall, then he's going to take the most direct route. And if we move it back again, he can calculate a new route each time. Very nice. So I've added his movement inside of this while true loop here. But I think what I'd like to do now is add a function to control this. So I'll add a new one down here, local function. I'm going to call this patrol, okay? The patrol function. And instead of manually doing walk to positions like this, I'm going to have a table of all the different destination points. So uh, I'm going to add a folder into the workspace. Add in a folder and we'll just call the folder uh, waypoints. And we don't need these to be called destination one and two anymore. So in fact, let's just name them back to part for the sake of it. Move them into the waypoints folder. And I'm going to add a few more of these. So we'll press control D and we can duplicate a few of them. And then I'm going to add in a few walls as well. Okay, so we've got some kind of basic map going here. Uh, all of our waypoints are inside the waypoints folder. And uh, we've got all our walls over here. So now going back into the AI script, and inside of the patrol, we're going to need to create a table first. So we'll say local waypoints equals, and that will be workspace dot waypoints, and then we'll get the children. Next up, we're going to... Um, get a random item from those waypoints. So we'll say local random num, and this will be equal to math.random. And normally you give two numbers, so you can say one and five, and then you get a random number between one and five. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We want to get a random number between one and the total amount of however many waypoints there are could type seven but we can actually put hashtag waypoints which will tell us however many children there are of the waypoints and then we just want to access a random waypoints so in our walk to here we can say walk to waypoints and then we use the square brackets and inside of here you add a number for which item from that table uh, so we can use our random num and then we'll get a random waypoint. And then we want to walk to the position of that waypoint. Okay, so then in this while true do down here, we're going to change this to while. Uh, let's try while wait one or wait, wait two even. And then we want to patrol. 
Oh, so we don't actually need to specify the position um, because that's happening inside the get path. So walk to and then play that. And I'll tell you he's going to walk. Which one is he going to? He's going to this this waypoint. He's going to wait two seconds and then he's going to head over to the next waypoint. Where's he going to go this time? Is he going to go over here? Wait two seconds and on to the next waypoint. Where's he going to go now? Over there. We could make this a bit smoother, maybe. Maybe every half second. I want a little pause each time. Oh, he's got a bit stuck there. So what we might need to do is adjust the radius again at some point. Uh, but this seems to work pretty well. He's going from point to point quite nicely. And moving around our very basic map. So is our AI complete? Well, not exactly. If we join with our character and we run up to the teddy, well, he's not going to ignore it. He's not going to attack us. He's going to ignore us because he's too busy uh, going about his patrolling. So we are going to need to add some kind of lookout for the player. But that's all we've got time for in this video. We've just got our basic pathfinding up. And in the next episode, we'll add some attacks so he can actually find, locate and chase after the players when he spots them. But that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching and make sure to subscribe so you can watch the next video in the series. See you next time.